Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to our live show, uh, Your Health. Alhamdulillah here for your benefit. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us uh, kind of research and say things which benefit us uh, in this world and the hereafter. Jazakallah khair. My name is Muhammad Hayat Riyaz Khan. I'm the lead consultant at the Zenith Clinic here in Bradford. Uh, before the break, we were, well, we mentioned all the details of the liver. Uh, if you look on the screen, inshallah, uh, there should be in front of you in the next few seconds a list of the remedies for, uh, for the uh, liver, the three remedies we mentioned. Uh, Phytolaca berry, Chianthus and Chalidonium, inshallah. Uh, if you do want to take the details, uh, you can just kind of either write them down or either take a photo snap of the screen. Adil, do we have that on the screen? Okay, they'll be coming in due course, inshallah. So, okay, Adil, if you just put down to the screen so that people can see the uh, details of that. Here we are. Chalidonium magus. That's the first combination. Uh, number two is Chianthus virginicus, and the th and the third is uh, Phytolacca. Phytolacca. These are the three remedies uh, which you can order from any reputable homeopathic pharmacy, or indeed, uh, huh. And uh, these should be in 30 ml each, 30, 30, 30 in a 100 ml bottle, and then take 20 drops three times a day. Again, I stress: let your GP know you're taking this. So, uh, you know, he's in the loop as well, inshallah. Jazakallah. Now, <clears throat> I want to speak now about gall the gallbladder. Gallbladder is basically, it, well, you, you, if you look at the liver, the liver has two lobes, the big right-hand side lobe and the left-hand side lobe. Right below the uh, liver, you have like a small pear-shaped kind of a sac. That's known as the gallbladder. Okay, now this gallbladder uh, is responsible for, you know, some serious, serious pains. You've heard of kidney stones, haven't you? Similarly, you have uh, gallbladder colic. So you, you have renal calculi colic, and then you also have gallbladder colic. Now, what tend let's talk about the gallbladder today because it's right next to the liver, inshallah. So we're going to mention the, uh, what the gallbladder is, uh, what can go wrong with it, what its purpose is, and then the remedies from the homeopathic pharmacopoeia to help. Before we go into that, let's just take this call, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum as salam. Ji, sister. Ji, I am from Manchester. I wanted to know that if I have MS, is there a nerve for homeopathic relaxation? Yes, when you have multiple cirrhosis, the myelin sheaths, which are called myelin sheaths, which are nerves to conduct the nerves, it's also a disease of the nerves. So, this is it's like a chronic illness. So, online, I can't tell you about it online. But if you have a homeopathic physician who is registered, you can talk to them and they will tell you about the prognosis. And that depends on how long you've had it, how severe it is. But there are prayers. You can understand this. And you can tell Allah Ta'ala, ضرور شفاء عطا فرمائے ہر بیماری کا علاج ہے یقیناً ہے لیکن یہ بھی ہے کہ اگر وہ بیماری بہت آگے بڑھ گئی تو then the options are limited okay تو I hope the answer is your question انشاءاللہ ٹھیک ہے من اور اس کے ساتھ ساتھ ایک اور بات بھی ہے یہ جو B12 نہیں جو B12 ہوتے ہیں B12 کی نئی ریسرچ نکلی ہے کہ یہ جو damaged nerves ہوتے ہیں یا جو conduction sheath ہوتی ہیں ان کے مرمت کے لیے یہ بی ٹویلف کے جو انجیکشنز ہیں یعنی they're very very good تو اگر آپ کے جی پی کو یہ ایسے اگر if he doesn't know about this you know bring it to his attention انشاءاللہ اوکی بین اوکی جی شکریہ جزاک اللہ جزاک اللہ خدا حافظ خدا حافظ so we're just speaking about gallbladder and its function so first of all the gallbladder is a pear shaped kind of suck on the under surface of the right hand side lobe of the liver so your liver, if you look at it from here, this is where your liver goes across. So this part is bigger and that part smaller. So right underneath there is this small sac, about three inches tall and about one inch in diameter. Yeah, in the, th in the thickest part, one inch thick and about three inches tall. What this uh, gallbladder does is that it, you know, the liver by its biliary ducts, it secretes bile. Now, bile is made of different things, including cholesterol and, uh, you know, uh, calcium. What it does is that it breaks down food. 
So the gallbladder is like a store. It stores the bile that's made in the liver. And then when it needs to, it's released into the jejunum uh, when it needs to digest the food. Now, what happens with this gallbladder is that on occasions, for different reasons, you can have acute and you can have kind of chronic, but it becomes the, the uh, secretions, the uh, calcium and the cholesterol kind of bind together and become stones, yeah? Now, some stones are actually in a small, small pea size, but some are actually, or can be, the size of a small pear, ya yeah Allah. And these can be very, very, very painful. In fact, sometimes the whole gallbladder becomes inflamed, which is known as cholecystitis, and we'll mention that, inshallah, in a few moments. But at the moment, I'm going to mention uh, uh, details about the gallstones. Uh, it's actually, you know, it's, one of, it's a major, major, major painful condition. And the only thing your GP can, well, there's a few things your GP and the surgeons can do, first of all. They can either remove the stones via surgery, or they can give you certain medicines which dissolve the stones, certain acids, you know, and the third thing is they do something called uh, lithotripsy or ultrasound. By ultrasound waves, they break the stones. Uh, but until these stones are removed, a person is in severe, severe pain. And unless you've had this, you can't even imagine how severe the pain is. And uh, it's quite common in certain people. Gallbladder colic due to these stones size of a pea or even a small pear. This is common most often in people with diabetes. People with diabetes will get this, uh, will get these stones more, number one. Number two, people of African kind of descent, they'll have this. And number three, ladies get it more than males. And number four, as you get older for some reason, you're more susceptible to getting gallbladder colic as you get older. Uh, and the reason for these stones uh, being formed is number one, excessive calcium and excessive cholesterol, number one. So if you have too much calcium and too much cholesterol, you're more prone to getting these stones. And number two, if that bile stays in the gallbladder for a long time, then that can also cause issues where you can get these small, small stones or sometimes not so small stones. And they are, as I mentioned, very, very, very painful. Uh, so what do you do with these then? When you have these stones, what can you do? First of all, you know, your GP offers you these three uh, options. If you choose not to go for these for whatever reason, or you want to try something else, in homeopathic medicine, there's some very, very good remedies which can help, alhamdulillah, help these stones kind of disintegrate and be passed out. The first remedy, again, mother tincture, is known as berberis, B E R. B E R R I S, berberis. This is a very good uh, remedy in mother tincture again, not just for this, uh, not just for the uh, gallbladder uh, colic stones or gallbladder stone colic, but also for kidney stones. Mashallah, very very good. Though berberis mother tincture is a very good remedy for those who want to try something holistic. Yeah, for uh, gallbladder stones again, twenty drops. Uh, maybe four times daily in a small amount of water and also you can also try Berberis uh, 12x uh, in the remedy uh, So first of all Berberis mother tincture is very very effective Actually, we've got a call waiting. Let's go to the call inshallah then we come back to these remedies. Assalamu alaikum ji bhai Okay Ji bhai wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah तो हाँ, we were just discussing the uh, remedies for uh, for gallbladder colic. So the first remedy, as I mentioned, is something called berberis mother tincture. This is very good for any issues of kidneys or even kidney stones. Uh, and here, gallbladder colic is very very effective. So twenty drops, maybe three to four times daily in a small amount of water. Number two, the second remedy is berberis. Uh, sorry, second remedy is called hydrastis. Hydrastis, H Y D R A S T I S. Hydrastis. This is a very good remedy again for the symptoms of gallbladder colic. 
gallbladder colic, very, very painful, very, very debilitating. And those people who have gone through it, only they know how severe. Some people say it's like the male equivalent of giving birth. That's how severe the pain can be alongside the kidney stones. Ya Allah. There's some very, very severe, uh, uh, severe illnesses. In fact, just on the uh, topic of, you know, severity of pain, you know, you may have heard of cluster headaches, cluster headaches. Now, people think, oh, migraine headaches, cluster headaches, they're the same. Cluster headaches, the pain is so severe, you can only imagine. In fact, I don't think you'll even know, but people who have cluster headaches, just for your information, people who have cluster headaches, they are put on suicide watch. The pain is so intense that, you know, a nurse normally rings these patients every day just to see if they're still, you know, if they're still there. That's how severe this uh, cluster headache is. So some of these, you know, conditions, unless you've been through them, you won't have an inkling of how severe it can be. In fact, one of my patients said to me about the cluster headaches that certain people he knows, what they have to do is they have to find a way to make themselves go unconscious because of the pain. And some people, you know, it sounds terrible, but they'll go to a wall and they'll hit their head on the wall until they become unconscious. La, la, la. So this, this gallbladder colic is excruciating pain. Uh -huh. So the first remedy I mentioned was Berberish mother tincture, 20 drops, 3 to 4 times daily. Number two, hydrastis, again, uh, a very good remedy for uh, gallbladder colic. Take this again 3 to 4 times daily. These two were mother tinctures. The other few I'm going to mention, these are mother tinctures. These are homeopathic, low potency tablets. The first of these is something called uh, calcarb, calcarea carbonica, again, you know, made from calcium carbonate, which is the constituent of the, uh, of the stone. You know what can cause, can cure, I mentioned this at the beginning. So calcarea carbonica, or in, uh, if you want to kind of abbreviate it, the abbreviation is calcarb, C-A-L hyphen C-A-R-B, calcarb. Order this if you want to, and you want to try this for your, uh, for your you know, uh, gallbladder colic, again with the GP's, uh, you know, uh, kind of supervision, in the 12x remedy and take it again four times daily. One tablet, four times daily, calcarea carbonica. Number two, berberis. Berberis is very, very important. Again, you're taking the mother tincture already, but alongside that, take this berberis in potency of 12x, three to four times daily. And the third remedy is called lycopodium, a very, very good remedy again for issues of digestion, lycopodium. And the fourth remedy, cholesterinum. This remedy is actually made from cholesterol. Again, you will see the homeopathic rule, what can cause, can cure. Cholesterinum is actually made from the cholesterol. So these six remedies, two mother tinctures and four homeopathic remedies in potency, can be very efficacious in helping people with gallbladder colic. Now, the second thing, the second disorder, rather, of the, of the gallbladder is something called cholecystitis. Cholecystitis is when the whole gallbladder, all three inches of length and one inch in diameter, becomes inflamed by itself. Yeah? And again, the pain is very, very excruciating. And why does it get, become so you know, inflamed? It's first of all, because inside that gallbladder, there's highly concentrated bile. That bile can cause the whole gallbladder to become inflamed. Or number two, you've got stones there which are blocking the neck of the gallbladder. Just like the kidney stones kind of go down the ureters and cause all these excruciating spasms, you know. Uh, similarly, in the gallbladder colic or cholecystitis, same thing happens, the gallstones block the uh, entrance of the gallbladder and this causes all the kind of severe, severe radiating pain in the upper right quadrant. And also the signs are very, very straightforward as well. You'll have kind of nausea, you'll have a rise in temperature, you don't want to eat anything, and you'll have uh, severe, severe pain, especially when you're breathing in. So when you take a deep breath, you'll have pain in the right inside. This tells us that you may have gallbladder colic. Anyway, so the remedies, uh, Acha, and what causes this acute cholecystitis? Uh, number one, typhoid fever. If you've been to any country where there's a lot of typhoid fever, Typhoid fever can bring on this pain. So if you've got any pain down here, you know, you can whittle it down to only a few things. And one of them may be this 
uh, cholecystitis, which is inflammation of the gallbladder. So number one, if you have typhoid fever or you've been in proximity of somebody with typhoid fever and you've caught it, then you can have this issue with your gallbladder. Number two, if you have any tumors in that region, that can also cause an inflammation of the gallbladder. Number three, uh, if you've got obviously gallstones, they can cause these symptoms. And number four, if you have any septicemia or blood poisoning, again, that can cause your gallbladder to become inflamed, known as cholecystitis. Uh, so another very, very important thing people don't realize is that, you know, these need to be dealt with quickly because they can become chronic and you have the same symptoms again and again. Sometimes they come, sometimes they go, sometimes they come, sometimes they go. And in homeopathic medicine, there's very, very good remedies which can be utilized to deal with this. Uh -huh. So we've just covered today the details of the gallbladder, gallstones, and in acute inflammation of the gallbladder. The same remedies we mentioned for the gallstones can be uh, are easily applicable and equally uh, uh, applicable to the cholecystitis. Very, very important. So I hope this has been of benefit to our listeners and uh, their loved ones, anybody who has this pain. There are many, many remedies in homeopathic medicine which can help. Uh, I want to, before we kind of uh, finish today's, but we've got about six, seven minutes left, I want to mention the benefits of something altogether different. Uh, this is not a homeopathic remedy, actually, but it's very, very good for a symptom many people over the age of 40, especially males, have, and that's known as benign prostatic hyperplasia, okay? Which means when your prostate gland gets bigger. Now, Obviously, that's one day we'll probably touch a bit more on that when we're talking about the urinary, uh, urinary organs and the kidneys, etc. But I want to mention the benefits because the sooner you start this, the better and quicker and, uh, the, you know, you'll get the benefits. So when you have benign prostatic hypoplasia, your prostate gland gets swollen. Now, what happens is when you go to the bathroom, you're avoiding urine. That urine comes from the, it's made in the kidneys, goes down the two ureters into the bladder. From the bladder to the urinary organ, they go via the prostate. So that urethra, that six, seven inch long pipe that kind of goes from the bladder to uh, the urinary organ, and then by which you micturate or urinate, that passes through the uh, prostate. Now the prostate is like a walnut gland, but sometime, and as you get older, even people in 35, 40 years old, it gets bigger and bigger. As it gets bigger, it impinges on the urethra and it makes it difficult for you to urinate. Sometime people have to get up in the, at night time, you know, 10, 11, 12 times just to go to the toilet to micturate or to urinate rather. And uh, you know, they only pass a small amount, small amount, small amount at one time. This is normally because of acute prostatic hyperplasia where the prostate becomes kind of swollen and there are different reasons for it but I want to share with you a natural remedy which can be very very effective for this mashallah not just for this it helps the body in voiding water there's many people who have edema in their limbs it causes more pressure on the you know venous supply because there's more water more water means more kind of a volume of the blood and that causes more pressure so it's good to and this is why your doctor will give you diuretics, you know, chemical drugs to do the same thing, which can cause, you know, uh, problems to your kidneys. That's why they keep uh, checking your kidneys out. But what I want to share with you today is a very, very good natural remedy, which can do the same thing and benefit your, uh, you know, acute, uh, 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 what do you call the uh, prostate hyperplasia without the side effects. And it tastes very nice as well. And what these are known as is none other than pumpkin seeds, mashallah. You can see this packet, mashallah, our Adil's favorite, I'm told in my ear, mashallah. Pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds are amazing. They're really, really lovely, mashallah. And if I just, if you allow me to quickly read the benefits of this, mashallah. See, Adil can't do anything with, with the cameras, but if you can see these, they're very, very, mashallah, delicious. And uh, they're, just, they're just, just so nice. These are so good for your prostate gland. In fact, not use a prostate gland. Let me just read a few things out to you about the benefits of this and up hood summit jange okay first of all these pumpkin seeds contain four main fatty acids linoleic acid which is omega-3 oleic acid omega-9 palmitic and acid number four four acids 
Pumpkin seeds are rich in antioxidants and fatty acids which assist the body to grow and progress naturally. What do they also do? They reduce your LDL, low density lipoprotein, your bad cholesterol, and then in doing so, they boost your good cholesterol, okay? Also, due to its zinc-free fatty acids and something called plant sterols, they help you with kidney stones, mashallah. So you avoid getting them in the first place, and if you have them, they kind of, you know, they'll help you and get rid of them. And if you have any urinary infections, the burning, you know what I mentioned to you earlier on about acute prostatic hypoplasia, where your prostate gets bigger and bigger, that's a slow process. Another uh, thing with the prostate illness is called prostatitis, when you have an acute infection of the prostate, where you have burning pain, and ladies have cystitis. For that, these seeds are also very good. You know, a tablespoon night and morning, or get the oil and a teaspoon twice a day, mashallah. But anyway, let's continue with this. The nutrients that are found in pumpkin seed oil pro predominantly, they focus on the urinary tract, mashallah, and the reproductive areas of the human bodies. Uh, huh. So another thing, so very, very good for the prostate. It brings the prostate gland slowly, slowly back to its normal size. And sec uh, thirdly, because uh, the second thing was that it helps with your... Uh, your cholesterol. The third thing with this is that it's very good for arthritis symptoms. Very, very good because of the antioxidants and essential fatty acids that they contain. Uh, chemicals found within pumpkin seeds may result in frequent urination because of the diuretic properties. It helps you go and pass urine. So these are very, very good. And the uh, look, look at the uh, mashallah, the study. It says here. For men, zinc is very important, and this is what they contain. And a recent large-scale study involving over 2,000 men found that pumpkin seeds were effective in reducing the symptoms of benign prostatic hypoplasia. As a result, they are fast becoming one of the leading natural supplements for men's health. So if you have these symptoms where you need to go to the bathroom frequently and you feel your prostate... Because when the prostate is, uh, you know, kind of growing, it will press on that urethra. So you'll have issues with passing urine, uh, you'll have other issues as well. Uh, anything that passes through there, whether it's you know semen or whether it's uh, urine, it will be very, very difficult. So to take away that pressure and to reduce the prostate, you know, uh, you can avail of this amazing, amazing healthy food, pumpkin seeds, which has four, mashallah, different kind of oils inside it. And, and the studies have shown again and again how effective it is. And the main thing with this study shows that it acts upon the prostate gland and it acts upon the urinary organs. So, mashallah, you can't go wrong. The so next time you want to have a diet, then make sure you've got plenty of these pumpkin seeds inside your house. Or is say apko bohot hi, bohot hi, bohot hi, faida hoga. Inshallah. Mashallah. Uh, we're coming to the end. We've got 51 seconds left of today's program. Uh, again, I hope it has benefited uh, you, inshallah, in terms of health. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with good health in this world. May Allah ta'ala bless us with all the blessings he's given us. May Allah ta'ala give us the ability to be thankful for these blessings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to be kind to our relatives and above all our parents. First of all, your doors to paradise, your father and your mother. May Allah Ta'ala help us to do the khidmah. May Allah help us to look after our brothers and sisters and all the people in our community with no distinction whatsoever. May Allah help us to benefit them and do the khidmah to attain Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's happiness. Jazakumullah for taking your valuable time and listening to our program. Please remain with us. Uh, uh, please uh, join us again next week, inshallah. Until then, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.